What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dabrunski here and today we're going to be breaking down another character in Diablo 2. This time it is the Fire Druid which I think is a forgotten PVM character. Now like all of my Bill Guy videos, timestamps will be in the description below so if you want to bounce back and forth between the attributes, the gear, the gameplay, the skill tree, they're there for you guys to use so please uh, take advantage of them. Other than that guys, really do hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So there's a few things that I want to cover about the Fire Druid in general before we dive into the specific breakdown of the attributes, the skill tree, and the gameplay whatnot. First off is that this is an extremely expensive character. Now I have received a few comments in previous build videos where you guys are a little bit tired of seeing the really high-end geared stuff. And in response to that, I have tried to slowly sprinkle in different variety budget character build videos. But uh, just a forewarning, this is an extremely, extremely expensive character. So I'm using uh, rumors like Enigma, Phoenix, Fortitude, Infinity. And on top of that, I'm also wearing high end uh, uniques like Raven Lore and then using very good rolled facets in order for this character to be viable. And then you couple that with like Skillers, Torch and Annie and whatnot. So it is an extremely expensive character, but there really is no other way around it when it comes to a PVM Fire Druid. The second point that I want to cover is what is the quote unquote uh, ideal faster cast rate breakpoint for the Fire Druid. Now there is numerous cooldown delays on specific fire skills, which I'll get into more when I break down the skill tree but myself personally I prefer the 99 FCR breakpoint just because it feels a little bit more fluid when I'm teleporting to the ancient tunnels and then through the ancient tunnels because that is an area that uh, the fire druid excels at farming but there is some people that don't mind using the 68 FCR breakpoint and that's because like I said there is numerous casting delays on the fire spell so you can't repetitively spam like Fisher for instance so it doesn't really benefit you having a really high FCR breakpoint other than just the fluidity of teleporting around with your character. So if you have like a one teleport waypoint right by uh, the ancient tunnels entrance, you can kind of get away with 68. But again, it's really up to you. But this particular build that I will be breaking down is a 99 FCR breakpoint druid. The third point that I want to specifically mention about this character is the skill Armageddon. Now some people when they're building their fire druids they actually ignore this skill altogether and that is because it takes a lot of prerequisite skills to unlock it but myself personally I think it's a mistake not using it because it is a lot of damage and because I'm using Fissure as my primary attack and then supplementing with Armageddon it does last for nearly a minute so I have almost 9k fire damage I believe with Armageddon. I feel like it's just a mistake to not use it. It is a little bit sporadic when you're aiming. Uh, that's one kind of disadvantage to it. And the other huge disadvantage to it is that when you cast it, it has a six second delay on it. So you cannot use any other fire skill for six seconds after you cast Armageddon. So you really need to be strategic in when you choose to actually cast the skill. But again, I think it's a mistake not to use it. And the final point that I want to cover about this character before we jump into the attributes is that your resistances are a little bit more important with the fire druid than they are with your typical a wind druid setup and that is because your standard wind druid has a high level synergized cyclone armor so you're absorbing a lot of elemental damage and you can honestly get away with practically no resistances in hell as long as you stay on top of recasting your cyclone armor but the fire druid and the way that you're distributing your skills you do not have a very powerful cyclone armor so some specific resistances are important to cap so in my opinion you should have a high level lightning and i also have a high level poison res because i typically farm the ancient tunnels with this character but fire res you really don't need to worry about because you have the massive fire absorb from the rumored phoenix but that basically covers all of the main points that i want to talk about in regards to this character so now we'll dive into the attributes so for this particular Jura build, I went with a Max Vita setup. That is primarily what I run the majority of my characters with because I mostly play soft core. I'm not too big into the hardcore thing, but I have a 156 points into strength. That is just the bare minimum requirement to equip the Monarch Shield, which I have the rumored Phoenix in. More on that later when we touch over the gear. Nothing into dexterity, nothing into energy, and then I have 533 points or the remaining total of my attribute points put into vitality for almost 1500 health. And then when you combine that with battle orders and oak sage, 
you get nearly 5k health with this setup, so a very, very tanky character. But that basically covers the attributes, so now we'll take a look at the fire skill tree. So there's a lot of different ways you can invest your skill points within the elemental skill tree for the druid. I know I just said fire, guys. I apologize. It is the elemental skill tree. And this is how I decided to break mine down. I wanted to make sure I unlocked Armageddon, so I put a point into all the prereqs, so you have one into all of these just to get Armageddon. And then I maxed Fisher first, and then I maxed its synergies, so I maxed Volcano and Firestorm, and then I also maxed Armageddon. I only have one hard point into Cyclone Armor, I didn't choose to put any more into it, I just recast it. It doesn't really absorb as much as it would with a typical Wind Druid setup, but with the way I invested my skill tree, I have 4,000 damage Fisher and 8 to 9k damage Armageddon. Now the cool thing about using Fisher and Armageddon together is that when you max Fisher, you increase the duration of Armageddon. So I have nearly a minute duration. It's actually 50 seconds with Armageddon. So it's actually not too bad, even though there is that annoying six second delay when you cast Armageddon. But that's how I kind of broke my skill tree down. I know that some people use Fisher completely and they ignore Armageddon altogether. Again, myself personally, I think that's a mistake, but it really just depends on how you want to fill your build. But that's really the full investment of the elemental skill tree. Shapeshifting is very straightforward, absolutely nothing. We're never uh, transforming into anything. Although a really cool thing to note about Armageddon is that you can actually use it when you're in werewolf or werebear form. It's kind of a cool thing for style points, but I don't have any points into the shapeshifting skill tree. And then for summoning, I just have one hard point into all of these. I use the bear as a meat shield, and then I put my remaining points into Oak Sage. Now, depending on if you want more life or if you want to boost the damage of your Merc and your bear, but mostly just boost the damage of your Mercenary, you can use Heart of the Wolverine. And actually, a high, high level Heart of the Wolverine, excuse me, does add a significant amount of damage to your Mercenary. So that definitely is an option, but I decided to go with Oak Sage because I really like having close to 5k health but that basically wraps up all three of the druid skill trees so now we'll dive into the gear of the character. So the gear for this fire druid it is extremely expensive and it's centered around the 99 FCR breakpoint. We'll talk about a few different gear options if you're fine with the 68 FCR breakpoint but again my build is centered around that 99 breakpoint and maximizing fire damage. So starting off with the gloves I have mage fists in my opinion these are the top tier glove. One to fire skills so we're boosting fissure and armageddon damage. 20 FCR helps me reach that 99 FCR breakpoint and then I also have a little bit of mana recovery which isn't too huge, but as far as different alternative gear options go for gloves, you could use something like Trangs if you want the cold res and the FCR, or Blood Fist would be a cool option if you want more health and FHR, or Chance Guards if you want to boost your MF. Those are three different alternative options, but again, my opinion, I think Mage Fists are top tier. As far as the weapon goes, I went with a Suicide Branch. This one is ethereal for style points. But I really like this weapon. I think it's very underrated and it works really well with this particular 99 FCR breakpoint uh, druid build. So I have the one all skills, 50 FCR, I mean 40 life boostable by battle orders, uh, increasing the maximum mana, 10 all resist resistances, excuse me. A very, very nice caster weapon and it has the freedom of a socket choice. So I put a minus five plus three fire facet in it for more damage. Now, as far as different alternative options go, Heart of the Oak is probably gonna be your number one choice outside of a suicide branch. I mean, three doll skills, 40 FCR and more resistances. It is a very nice alternative option. Although myself personally, I kind of like the suicide more in this particular build because the 50 FCR helps me reach 99 very easily and then I'm getting more damage with the fire facet. So for the helmet I'm using a fire faceted raven lore. This one was a minus 20 fire res, 22 to all res raven lore. Has three elemental skills on it and then I put a minus 5 plus 4 fire facet in it again for maximizing the fire damage. In my opinion this is the top tier number one helmet to use hands down. Something like a, you know, 5 to Fisher or 5 to Armageddon and Rear Pelt, it wouldn't even come close to something like this, just basically purely because of the minus 25 fire res on it. 
But as far as different alternative options go, I mean, I guess you could use something like a Jalal's maybe with a fire facet, but uh, chances are if you have the wealth to make a rune word like Phoenix or, or Infinity for your mercenary, excuse me, you should have a Raven lore at this point. So really, in my opinion, is the top tier helmet to use. For the amulet in this build, I'm actually using Amara's, two doll skills, five attributes, 24 doll resistances. You could use a really nice caster amulet. The issue with my particular goal of trying to reach 99 FCR is I don't have a two to druid skills, 10 FCR amulet, or sorry, I don't have a two to druid skills, nine FCR amulet. That's all that I'm missing. I really can't seem to craft it. So it's very unfortunate. That is why I'm using uh, this Mara's. So yeah, definitely for alternative options, if you had a two to druid skills, 10 FCR amulet, that would work, a caster amulet. If you don't know what that is, you can look up the crafting recipe on the Ariad Summit. And then I'm pairing that with a 10 FCR, 20 to strength, 14 MF rare ring, and then an SOJ. Uh, the 10 FCR with Arachnid's Mesh, one all skills, 20 FCR there. Combining that with the FCR and the Mage Fist and the FCR and the Suicide Branch, that is how I reach a total of 99 FCR. So again, if I had that stupid 2 the Druid Skills 10 FCR Caster Amulet, I would probably swap out this ring. I would run 2 SOJs for a little bit more maximum mana. For my shield, I am using Phoenix. Very, very expensive. Vex, Vex, Low, and Jaw. Uh, for the minus 28 fire res, that's the main reason why we're using it. Uh, 50 to life boost by battle orders is really cool too. Maximum light res, maximum fire res. That's not too important because of the fire absorb. Like I mentioned, uh, the fire absorb on Phoenix basically nullifies the majority of the fire damage that you will ever take in the game. That's why I'm not too worried about fire res and why I said it's more important to cap your lightning res with this particular build, in my opinion. So if you don't have the god tier Phoenix room word, you could absolutely use spirit. You're just not going to do anywhere near as much damage and you're not going to have that juicy redemption aura that's replenishing your mana globes and your health globes uh, constantly. But yeah, spirit would definitely be the cheap route. For sure, hands down, you could run like a Raven lore Photo, use spirit, have an infinity mark. You don't really need to run all the crazy top end god tier stuff that I'm using, but it really does make the difference on higher players difficulty settings uh, when you're taking on uh, monsters that have a lot more health. For my boots for this build, I went with Sandstorm Trex. Uh, this is an Eth pair. It has repair durability mods. So again, I've had people comment, ask me why are you using Eth boots? Well, they have the repair durability mod, so it's okay. They never run out of durability. But the reason I'm using these boots is because of the FHR. It's the only faster hit recovery source I have on this build. And also the poison res. The plus strength vitality is nice, but the poison res is really huge because the majority of the farming that I do with this particular build, it's in the ancient tunnels. And every time you kill an embalmed, they have that poison cloud. So it's very annoying teleporting around having low poison res. So that's why I think that Trex are a really good complement to this build and the area that it farms. As far as different alternative options go, you could use War Travelers if you want more MF or a really nice pair of rear boots that have like faster run walk, FHR, say like, you know, lightning res, poison res, a little bit of MF. Those would be really nice boots to complement this build instead of the S Sandstorm Trex. I haven't really found the god tier nice pair of rare boots yet, but ideally I would probably swap these out for a really nice pair of rare boots. But that basically covers all of the main gear. And then on Switch, I just have a CTA. This is a 462 CTA and then Spirit on Switch. Spirit gives the plus two skills to boost battle orders. But that basically wraps up all of the gear. As far as the inventory goes, it is pretty straightforward. Full inventory of skillers outside of uh, one Geed's Grand Charm. Now, ideally, like faster hit recovery or plus life skillers, plus elemental skillers would be like God tier. I could get well into the range of nearly 6k health if I had a lot of nice skillers that have uh, plus life on them, but I don't have any. These are all just plain sorted like maximum damage and decks which are useless. I have a 1329 any charm and a 1515 druid torch. And then my entire inventory of small charms is different assorted lightning res. Small charms that I have one that's two to strength uh, for all resistances. That's actually a really nice charm. 20 to life, 10, uh, 10 uh, lightning res. But uh, the reason why I have so many assorted lightning res small charms is simply to just cap out my lightning res. Um, so when I go to my main hand with Phoenix with the plus lightning res, I have 80, 75 poison, coal I'm not too worried about, and then I have 25 fire, which again, 
The fire absorb on Phoenix pretty much negates the need to have any fire resistance at all. But that uh, basically covers all the gear. So now we'll just take a look at the Merc's gear. Merc's gear is pretty straightforward. You have to use the rumored infinity to break some fire immunes and then just increase the damage of your fire druid. So yes, very expensive rumored Burmal Burist, and it is on the majority of my expensive builds. I mean, maybe you could run something like an insight if you wanted to, but you're going to really struggle in terms of damage. Uh, as far as the helmet goes and the body armor, I mean, there's so many different combinations. I've used this on previous build videos. So I have a chammed famp gaze that gives me life stolen per hit, 20 damage reduction, and cannot be frozen with the cham rune, and then fortitude for massively boosting the damage. But I mean, really, there's a lot of different body armors. You could use like chains of honor, treachery is really good as well. Uh, for your helmet, any source of life leech. So there's like Crown of Age or Crown of Thieves. Sorry, not Crown of Ages. Crown of Thieves, Endarials, Vampire Gaze, uh, even Tal's Mask. Any sort of form of life leech would be really good on the build. Uh, this particular Merc is a Nightmare Offensive Mercenary for the Might Aura to boost his damage, which is very effective when you couple that with the Heart of the Wolverine Spirit, which I talked about. This particular build, I'm just using Oak Sage, but that basically covers everything about the Merc's gear that I wanted to talk about. So now we'll do an Ancient Tunnels run on Players 3, and then we'll follow that up with a Chaos Sanctuary run on Players 3. The Chaos Sanctuary run is going to be a little interesting because I'm going to have to rely on the Merc a lot to kill some of the fire immunes uh but i still thought it'd be cool to show an area where the majority of fire immunes are broken and then an area where i will have to deal with some fire immunities so like i said players three difficulty setting uh when i'm farming this character it's really good to go west back to the road encampment and then go to the lost city it's kind of a it's a more efficient way of farming ancient tunnels instead of running all the way up to the waypoint uh, to, to go back to the Lost City when you make a new game. But uh, we'll do the double buff, which people are not really a fan of, but I like doing it on the Druid, getting a little bit more extra health. So you can see 99 FCR is pretty fluid compared to the 68. So before I enter the tunnel, I cast my Armageddon because like I said, there's a six second cooldown delay where right now I currently can't, currently can't cast Fisher, sorry. So then I'll teleport and by the time I reach the first champion or boss pack, that cooldown is off, and it can cast Fisher. A small turn later. Then uh, Redemption totally replenished my health globe. Next boss pack. There's no boss back here. I'll recast Armageddon. Go back to my main hand teleport. But each one of those random kind of sporadic uh, meteors that's falling from our again is almost 9k damage. So that's why I really think it's a mistake to just use Fisher, even though I will acknowledge it's kind of annoying the, the delay. And you have to make sure that you time when you recast your Armageddon properly. Work on plate. Nice fortitude base. Yeah, 460 defense. It's four open sockets though. So yeah, that basically... We'll just do one more run because that was pretty quick. I'll do one more Ancient Tunnel run. Good day. I won't talk as much this time. We'll just kind of show the build really quickly. Little buff. Cast Armageddon before we hit Ancient Tunnels. This is when I mentioned where I really think that six, uh, the 68 FCR breakpoint is, it's why I'd rather use the 99 is from teleporting long distances like that. I feel like it's just a lot quicker. I mean, again, it depends on how you roll your ancient tunnel map. If you roll a really nice one where everything is spaced together, then you can kind of get away with 68. It's more of a personal preference thing, I think. guys okay take a little while to go down the invaders have higher fire resistance uh you can break it with infinity they just naturally have a higher fire res than everything else so they take a little bit longer to kill uh, 
but Armageddon just really think it's a mistake to not use it on the build. Okay, that guy's fire immunity can't be broken. Let's have your mercenary take up fire moons. Come on, Merc, focus on him. Here we go, that's two ancient tunnel runs. Let's do Chaos Sanctuary right now. So there's going to be a lot of fire immunities. The Doom Knights, you can break their immunity, but uh, everything else you can't. So we'll see how this run goes. Shouldn't be too bad. I'm just going to teleport right to the center. And then uh, the Chaos Sanctuary run, players three with the Fire Druid. Best Armageddon. Probably the worst place for a fire druid. Vector's gonna be a pain in the butt. Every time he casts Armageddon, there's a six second delay. The Venom Lords, we can't break their immunity. So that's where a really, really good strong Merc comes in handy. So I'm gonna wait till the casting delay. I guess it doesn't matter, I can't break these guys' immunities. Hope Sage died, so this is all on my bear and mercenary Rosin. Come on, Rosin. Rosin. If I have to, I can recast my bear. So this is definitely going to be the slowest part. Everything is fire immune, but uh, everything else should go by pretty good. There you go, he's working on Infector now. Done. Alright, Deceis. Way up there. Deceis is down. Tear of Might. Tear of Might for a build video. Armageddon Meteor. Took him out there, one shot at him. Getting going, Fisher Diablo. Probably better to stand on the edge, try and get those meteors to land on Diablo. Diablo. There we go. So that is the worst possible place that you can run this druid. And we still did it. Obviously, Ancient Tunnels is a lot better. But uh, yeah, I wanted to try and go 
preferred area and a not so preferred area to demonstrate uh, this character build. Well guys, there you have it. That is my fire duo build guide video. Really do hope you guys enjoyed it. It's not necessarily the most effective character in Diablo 2, but it's definitely something different and viable, although it is extremely expensive. But if you guys are tired of the traditional cookie cutter builds, definitely give the fire druid a shot. It might not be as good in the Chaos Sanctuary as a hammered in, but it's definitely something new, different style points, all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you could throw a like on it, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my Diablo 2 YouTube channel. Post new weekly content and stream on a consistent basis so there's always new stuff to look forward to. And I'm slowly going to be bringing in variety streams as well, so hopefully we can, in the long term, appeal to a bigger audience. But guys, the continued support really does mean a lot, and I'll catch you guys on my next video or stream. Have a good one.